Hi team, welcome back. Welcome back to the day two for the Selenium with Jane training. And uh, here's what we're going to do very quickly today. We will do a review of what we did on day one. Then we will continue on the path of trying to master the, the tool, the art of automation using this open source tool called Selenium. Hi right, team. So very quickly, I want to go in and show you what else can we do with the IDE, right? So, but before I do that, I would like to see what did we do on the application called dice.com last in the day one, right? The first thing we did is we created this Excel and we said that whatever we do, we're going to put it as part of our plan out here. Then it is very easy to go in a very systematic direction and try and perform and replicate these exact steps manually or be able to teach the tool Selenium as to how to understand what we are doing. And as I had mentioned, there are few very, very important concepts. The concept number one that is important for automation is where do we need to perform a specific action? Okay? <clears throat> and what do we need to do? So that's exactly what Selenium captures and puts them into its learning process. Okay? How do we identify the object and what do we want to do on it? So we said we're going to perform these steps. We recorded these steps with the Selenium IDE and we could replay them back. Now let's go quickly open up what we did. So once you open your Firefox browser team, you will notice your Selenium IDE out here. And once I launch the Selenium IDE, I can go and quickly open something called as a test case. What we did in day one is a test case. It is one scenario that we're trying to test. Okay? Typically, this has no format. But when you want to see what is happening in those steps, you can open that test case and you will see that Selenium will list down those three important things. <clears throat> the command which answers what we want to do, the target which answers where we want to perform a certain activity, and the value that gives any additional inputs that are required. Okay? So if we quickly do a run of this test case, let's try and see how each of these steps are performed on the application. Okay, So what I will do is I will move this test to run very very slowly. So I drag that icon to the extreme right corner. Now I will click on the icon where I can play or run this current test. When I do that team, notice what is happening to the application on the right. So open command is opening and launching what is the target it is doing. It is just one slash, but once we have a base URL set, it is going to perform that. Type is a command which goes in and enters any text, but where should it enter? It takes that as the target. The target that Selenium has used to identify it is out here. How do we identify these targets? What are the different ways of identification we will come to? more detailed in day 3 and day 4. But still, right now, we're trying to master how is it that Selenium is working at the back end. Okay? That's our primary goal. <clears throat> now, uh, what you saw also is that there are certain of the steps that can be shown in a darker green. That is basically, we are doing a verification. Okay? It is not just, is that step completed or not? I'm checking for a certain aspect on the application at that point. If that meets the requirement, then we're showing a darker green. At the end, you will see there is something called as the runs and failures. Now, I had minimized the bottom portion of the IDE earlier. Let me bring it back by clicking on this dotted line out here. What you see out here are four different types of tabbed windows. Okay. Most important for us initially are the log and the reference. What the log holds is details about the execution status for each of the steps. Okay? It is basically giving us saying that executing this, executing this, executing this and so on. 
okay now let's say for example we deliberately try and make something fail out here okay I am uh, verifying for this text out here to be selenium right let's say that I add another command how can I add a command team I can right click on any area and say let's say J unit okay and I will say verify text present or verify text at that point okay now as soon as I click this my command will get generated so instead of doing a record I physically went to the application and asked selenium to understand what I'm doing and perform that step all right now that we have done this how can I make it fail if I run this test again it will be passed let's say that I go into the second command where it is actually typing the value in a specific target which I believe is identifying that with the area where we enter the technology or the keywords for that specific jobs that we're looking at. And let's take away J unit out of it. So there's no J unit in my search term. I don't expect J unit to appear at the end or anywhere earlier. So I can move that command wherever I want within the ID itself. Okay. One very, very good important aspect team is that every command has a detailed explanation or uh, kind of a documentation against it mentioned here. Let's say that I click on open. Okay, once I click on open, you will see what does an open command do. What do I need to pass as a target? What will it do? How will it open that specific URL? Sort? What does a type command do? Okay, what do I need to type? Locator is the first argument which is saying identified by the target. It is saying where do we need to type? And then finally, what do I need to type? So if I talk about click and wait is a command where I click on a specific element or object on the application which is identified by this target. Okay, we have not yet come to mastering how we identify it. We will come there very soon. But just assume we are trying to focus on the command part at the moment. What this would do is it's not just clicking on the object, but it is also waiting for the new page to load completely before it moves forward in the test. Why can't I just use click? Why should I use click and wait? It's very simple. By default, there are certain timeout that your Selenium comes with. See, you have some timeout here, default timeout. So, when I say click and wait, the command is selenium click on that object and wait for a maximum of 30 seconds that is displayed in the options for us before you decide to throw an error what it means is if the page is taking more than 30 seconds and selenium cannot find the next one verified text present then it would fail that step and move forward All right let's say I just include change this out here and say click only it is all about experimenting team. Learning these tools is all to play around with it and say, hey, what if I do this? Hey, what if we do this? What would happen uh, to, to my uh, test run if I, if I tweak something? And the beauty of this IDE team is as soon as I start to write anything, I will start to see all the commands that start with those three letters or one letter or whatever you okay so let's say I want to talk about something called as uh, we already have is there something called select see there are select commands probably if I have a drop down list I might use a select command or now I want to change this command to click instead of click and wait okay if I do click on the same thing and I rerun my test case let us see what happened the way I would love to learn and the way I would love to teach team is Try and experiment. Try and deliberately make things fail. See what will happen. Okay? Why did the verified text present search results fail? Why did now team you interact with me and tell me why each of these are failing? There are certain of them which are in light green. What does that mean first? Can you interact with me on the chat and send me the message about it, please? Why are certain of them in light green? What does it mean? 
is starting at the top. So what does it mean by light green? That is basically not even a verification step. That is just the fact that that step got completed. That step is executed. Did we verify something? Are we able to prove that it is a success or failure? No, just completed. Task done. Now, next one. Out here, click ID equals search submit. And you can see the same results out here appearing, right? So I can probably use it out here as well to read. So all this is fine. Very click ID search submit executed okay that is done now the next one is a fail search results why did this fail and hence it's showing in that darker pink shade why did verified text present search results fail can't we see that out here we can see that text right that text is present all I'm doing by verified text present is is that text present anywhere in the application Verified text is saying, is this text, JUnit, present at that specific spot, target. Okay, this verified text present is, this is my target itself. Is it present anywhere in the application? The reason is that as soon as I clicked and as soon as I wanted to execute the next step, there was no waiting period between these two. So, while the page was already on the home page this main search page or it was in between loading that's when it failed all right that is exactly when it failed now why did this work correctly because it could find that text by the time the page got loaded till the time I came here now then why did this fail if the page got loaded and my verified text is not working because I don't see J unit. Don't I see J unit in the entire application? Is that the correct statement? Or I do not see J unit at that specific target location. Which is the correct explanation for this verified text failing? It is not visible at that specific target location on the application. I am not searching for J unit using verified text present everywhere on the application. I am saying that specific spot is it present or not. Then again verified text present selenium searching across it is there. Verified text present showing results 1 to 1 of 1. Why did this fail? Because what we see is 1 to 3 of 3. Right? How about verified text itself? That's a fail again. Why did the last step fail? Isn't Selenium there in so many different places in the application? Then why did it fail? The location that we are searching for, either Selenium could not find any element on that location or the element it found on that location, it could not see that the text was Selenium on it. Hence that failed. All right? It is all about experimenting, trying new things, and playing with this tool that make you master. Okay, Not about reading the references, not about reading tutorials, or just watching these sessions. You've got to get onto it. You've got to keep experimenting with it. All right? Okay, Shankar, very quickly uh, try and answer your question. What are you saying, Shankar? If I need to find a particular text in any part of the screen, then how do we do that? That's your verified text present. If the location is not important, you want to find that text anywhere in the screen, then it is verified that the text is present on the application anywhere. My verified text is saying that I want to search for a text, but I want to look only for a text in one specific location. Okay? Either search your whole house for stuff, or you say that it is there specifically in that specific uh, uh, locker or drawer and so on. All right, That's the difference. Now, let's try and give it a little more different shape. I'm going to save this test case as dice 2. Okay. Now, I want to create a new... So, let's make this back to where it is correct text okay this was click and wait because that's the right command and then this will work this will not work because there's no J unit there this will work this may not work because there are chances that this can change 
and this failed because it didn't find it here. So if I need to change it, I can simply start to record again or I don't even need to record. I can just say verify this text is present. Verify text at this location. So you would notice if we expand this, there is a difference between the target for this element and the target for this element. If I start from the left side and just scroll down without any logic about what each of these words are at the moment at least, you would notice that there is a, a number 3 out here, there is a number 2. So the location is different, how the target is identified in these cases. Right? That's a dice too. Now what I could do is I could create an additional test case. So I am going to go and say file new test case and start to write few steps or record a few steps for it. Okay? We are already on the page 2, correct? Now what we will do is let's say that I want to click on advanced job search. Alright? On the advanced job search, let's try and play a few things. I will keep Selenium RC. This is got reflected from where team? from my first dice, uh, first test case called dice2, right? Now, let's say that I want to exclude something from company name, just selecting. What is my purpose? Is my purpose to actually automate and test this application? No. My purpose for this exercise is to try and see how Selenium ID is reacting to different actions that I perform, okay? Now, let's say that I want to go further down and select by country, okay? See what is happening? The command is getting generated, the target is getting generated. And I want to, let's say, we want to select Canada. Alright? And my state is British Columbia. Okay? Now, after doing this, I could further go down, add new things, take away new things and so on. Let's say search telecommuting jobs only. And now with this new changed features, I'm going to click on find jobs. So what is it that I did? After my test case 1 got completed, I have moved to test case number 2, okay? We can rename this, this basically I can now save this test case as and say this is my dice 3, okay? I have now two set types of test cases. If I run this test case, it will independently run on its own. Now let's look at it. So whatever we have performed, it is trying to rep reproduce the same steps and perform those. The window or panel to the left side, to the bottom side, for our IDE purpose has two main things. One is log as to what has happened or happening with each of the steps and the reference which gives us the a little more English about uh, those specific uh, activities that we perform. Okay, so now we got showing results 0 of 0. So you could probably go in here and verify that this text is present. I'm not even saying verify text. I can also say the same thing, verify text on this specific location and this is the text expected. All right? So two more new things added to it. At this point in time, so I'm going to save this test case. This is already saved. I can close my ID or let's say that we will save this test suite. What is a test suite team? Test suite is nothing but a collection of one or more test cases. Okay? I can combine them together and say, hey, I want dice 2 and then dice 3 to be executed one after the other. Okay? Now, let's call this as dice underscore test suite underscore 1. Okay? Save. That's my new test suite. So I can run the entire test suite which will execute all of these test cases in that specific fashion in which it is present. Now, let's try and identify what the first command is doing. Team, can someone help me to identify what the first command is doing? What does the left thing say? To open a URL. What is the target saying? Target is giving me the URL. So, is this the URL that I see here? No probably this part of the, from this side to the right extreme is what I see here. What about this initial part, where is that coming from? My base URL, alright? My base URL is capturing the initial part and then the later part. What is actually happening with this step? 
Selenium is instructing the Firefox browser to navigate to this location. So whatever is present in this location, it will go there. So if I gave specific information, the search term and all that out here initially, it is taking that and putting that information there. Did I want Selenium to navigate to that? No, I wanted Selenium to complete DICE 2 where it comes to that specific page, then click on this. I don't want it to open. So let's try and delete this. Go to DICE 2 and click on this icon which says play entire test suite. Start with the first one, end with the last one. If I have more than two or three, it will go in that specific fashion and perform them. Okay. Now, your Selenium ID is a very, very simple tool, very powerful to what it does, but it's got its own limitations. What are the limitations that it primarily holds? Number one is that you cannot change too much logic in it. Okay? It is for a simple test run, but not for a complicated test run where you can say, hey, can I repeat these same sets of things n number of times? What if I want to do dice 2 and dice 3 for a different set of times each time? What if I want to go in a specific fashion so that uh, I can say that these details that are there out here are not coming in in here, but I want to store them uh, in an Excel file or a database, and I want Selenium to automatically pick those and execute them. Your customizations of these tests, creating the real power behind the flexibility of executing them, will be lacking. Okay, so at the moment, as you see the three main concepts of automation, that is efficiency, reusability and accuracy, I don't think it is inaccurate. So accuracy is being met. But whenever I want to reuse, I can pick up those things and reuse, at least some parts of it, right? But from an efficiency standpoint, the test efficiency is not about only one thing, whether the tests are they running quickly or not. It is also about maintenance. If something changes in my application, if tomorrow, instead of search results, our new term out here is, uh, let's say, um, search view or something like that, then I have to go back in here, see where search results is and go and change those. And if I want to test the same uh, test cases, DICE 2 and DICE 3, but I want to keep changing what is the search term that I'm using or the location and so on, I need to go back and change. So the efficiency part is a problem. And hence, we will need to move to better platforms like RC and then eventually GRID, which is an extension of it, to really utilize and take the power of this automation tool to the biggest, largest extreme possible. Right? That is the intent. Now, can't I do many of these things from the IDE itself? No, you cannot. There are certain extent to which you can go. For example, let's say that <coughs> I do not know how many search results that I'm getting here. This is dynamic. It keeps changing, right? I know that search results, whatever I see, 0 to 0 of 0 or some, whatever, is appearing at this particular spot. Okay, I know it is appearing at this particular spot, but I don't know that is it 0 to 0 of 0 or 0 to 3 of 30, whatever, what is it that it's showing me, right? So I want to be able to capture this text and display it where I want to. So to do that, what I can do is, let's say, out here, if I right click on this text, I can see only few commands here because I have already utilized them from a show all available commands and they, they got displayed out here. There is a new command called store text. Do you see this team? Store text. What it does is when I click on store text, it opens up and gives me a small pop-up window through JavaScript. Now what it's doing is your basic script that is there is can you can add a little few more JavaScript commands to it to make it more functional. Okay? But it'll still be rigid, it'll still not have the flexibility of actually running it through Java code. I'm a started to teach Java? No, I didn't. 
I'm just showing you few examples of things that are important for you to be aware. Okay, so I can give it a name for that variable. What JavaScript is telling me is, okay, you want to store the text, but where is it that you want the text to go? Store where? Take your uh, car, uh, box or something and put it where in the store room. Where? What is the name that you want to give to that box there? Okay, let's say I want to give uh, result count. That is the name I'm giving to it and say OK. It has generated that new code saying that store text. That is the command. You can see the literature towards it here. Basically, it's saying store text that is displayed out here and put that value into result count. Now, if I want to see what is coming out of result count, I have to output that value back somewhere, right? To do that team, what I'm going to do is use a simple new VBScript command called as echo. What echo, sorry, JavaScript, echo does is it gives out a message to the print screen, to my log. And my log is out here. Okay. If I say echo, and now I have to say what is there in result count. Okay. That's my target to it. Now, let's run this specific test case and see what happens. I can increase the speed a little bit more since we're not individually trying to observe what is happening at each individual steps. Now, I only want to run this test case, not the entire test suite. So, should I click on this icon or the icon on the right? The icon on the right because I am only running that specific test case. Okay. Now, it has clicked on the advanced job search part is performing these steps. As it performs, you will see this turning green or red in whatever fashion. Now is where I'm saying store text. What did I get team? At the end, when I said echo result count, do you see the value in result count? No. Why? Why don't we see the value in result count? Let's say I take a simple notepad as a background and try and explain a very important concept. There is something called as a variable. Variable is nothing but a memory space which in which the value of that can be changing. Okay? It is like you storing a phone number. Right? When you want to store a phone number of your contact, what do you do? You give a specific name and then the phone number. Whenever you want to search, you search for that name and you'll find that phone number. Correct? You've given a name to that information. If tomorrow that contact is changed his or her contact number, you pick up that specific um, contact name and say that this phone number I'm changing it right now. And eventually whenever you want to re receive that from your phone book, you just have to go search for that contact name. You will find the new value in that. Right? That is the concept. The concept is very simple. How do we store information within our uh, computer, within our application memory? Okay. So the first thing that comes to it is a name to it. Okay. What we gave as the result or result count variable is the name of that variable. That is how we identify that variable. Just like you may identify your uh, contact by name, like let's say Bill or Rob or whatever, correct? And then there is a value, okay? What is the value inside this variable's memory location? If I need to find the value in it, I have to get the name first and then I can try and identify the value. My echo command, what it is doing is, it is whatever I put here, it will do out here. In the log, it will put the same thing. So, how do I then get the value in the variable that is named as result count? I have to say out here that result count is uh, whatever I write in plain English is coming just as simple text. Now, for the value inside the variable result count, I have to do dollar open curl brackets result count and close curl brackets. Okay. Now, if I run this test suite again, I can clear my old log, so there is no old log. It's all fresh, what we do, and run this test case. 
let's see what comes out. And why is it that I'm capturing the result count? I am interested to see what comes in there and is there something that I can do with it. Okay. Now this text that I gave here is converted into result count is and then the value that is stored in the variable result count. Okay. Now after this step, if let's say into the same variable or a new variable, I want to put what is coming out from here. Let's say I want to see what is coming in the first uh, area out here. So what do I what do I do here? First thing I do is store text. Correct. That is my command. But how do I find this? I don't know how to find this target. So all I have to do at the moment is see how Selenium uh, sorry how Firefox is recognizing it. I can run this command like we did earlier. And let's say I want to put um, country out here. Okay. Now the same thing. This I don't need anymore because I got what I wanted. Store text, the target and the value. Out here now, what will it be team? It's going to be the command is echo and country, no, item displayed in the first category for country is Canada. Is this what I want to display team? Am I correct in what I'm doing? And let's just to uh, distinguish our variables. How about we start their names with a small v. So that I know that these are my variables. Wherever I see that v result count or country, it is my variable. Okay. Now, is this what I wanted to do? No. I didn't want to check for Canada. I don't know if it's Canada or if it's going to be something else. What if my label out here changes for country, not from not Canada, but some other state country like let's say Australia or something like that. Then what? Right? I want to see what is displayed there. That's it. Where am I storing it? V country. So I write V country out here. Is this correct in that case? No. Why? Because when we did the previous run, we realized that I want the value inside the variable that is named v country and for this script or the javascript to recognize that that is exactly what i want i have to use dollar open curl brackets and close my curl brackets now when i do the test run i am what am i doing what are these two things doing team it is very important to be precise in your answers team. Not that you're not giving. I'm, I'm very glad that you're interacting and giving the right answers. But the thought process is the most important thing in automation. The, listen to the question very carefully. What is What are these two steps doing? The answer should be that the first step is first storing a text that is located in this target into a variable that is named v country. My next step is taking the is echoing or putting information into log and the information it is putting is this whole text followed by the value of my variable v country at this point in time okay if i do the same thing and let's say that into the same variable i put what is coming out here and it says store text again same command now instead of giving a new variable let's say if uh, this tool of mine will take the same variable name. I took the same variable name and put that and I will say finally echo again. See how we are mastering these simple commands team? By practicing on them, not saying what does click do, what does select do, what does add selection do, what do these do? No. We are going at thinking let's start using. It's just as simple as that. If you want to swim, you got to jump, get into the water. Unless you get your hands dirty with it, we will never learn. Now I'll say uh, the state is and dollar open curl v country. What am I doing? The same variable that is there out here that I've used. I am taking a new value that is displayed at this location and putting it in the same variable. Now when I call the echo command after that refreshing of that value, it should give me that new value. So I can change the values also. 
for those variables. Okay, let's do a test run and see what happens. What I want you to do, team, is whatever I'm doing right now, to that extent, I want you to practice on any application that you find. Don't be worried about what it is showing in the target. Don't be worried about what it's showing in the command. But I want you to just experiment, play it around. Take any application, just start to record and see how it works. How do you install Selenium IDE? A very, very simple uh, video is already there um, in my um, YouTube channel. So you could look at it. So what am I interested after this test? I won't like to see the results that are coming up here. Someone, uh, team, if you have questions, you can use the chat. You are also open to uh, raise your hand. I will come to your questions in a second. Let's first see what is coming up here. So store text into V country, good. Item displayed in the first category for V country is dollar V country. Why is this not uh, showing me the value? Uh, it is saying it is executing the command. The result of executing this command is coming next. Then that is, we have I have a code right now. Item displayed in the first cat category for country is Canada. Now the same thing when I change the value into it. Now it is British Columbia. Do you see this? That's the difference. That's how it is trying to identify. All right, team. I want you to practice this. Practice on what we're doing. Take any application. Just keep experimenting. What I'm doing, you can practice on what I'm showing you, or pick anything and keep on going with it. All right. Uh, let's see. Team, any questions at this point in time? Okay. What I would like to do in tomorrow's session, team, is primarily that I want to go a little bit deeper into commands, but more deeper into target. Okay. I will use a tool called Firebug to show you very briefly how we can we can ourselves identify these without doing a record and try and write our own set of code. Okay. And then we will move into the next stage where we have installed a platform called Eclipse that will help us to write from the very, very simple basic Java code and I don't assume that any of you come with that experience so I will make sure that we try and treat the audience in the same manner, go from the basics of it and develop slowly something called as a data driven framework, a keyword driven, a hybrid framework which is the most important aspect. Then we will move on to a few other interesting topics. Okay, let's see. Uh, Paritosh, is echo command only for display in ID? It can also be used to output in any other place. So at the moment, Paritosh, we are seeing as to what can I use to make my script a little more interactive with us so that I can give it some information. It can probably get me some information and give it back and so on. My intent is I, if I have entered Canada here, I want to verify that this text also has Canada out here. How am I verifying now? I am running this test and manually doing the verification of the log. But eventually I would love to get into a state where I get a report saying that, okay, you entered Canada, we got Canada. Good, pass or fail. That kind of a level we will automatically try and get to. When we get into the Eclipse part, we will use different commands to perform exactly what we see here uh, through our Selenium server or RC and how that really gets into uh, conditional statements, loops, repeating the steps different n number of times and so on. All right? Paitash, I hope you, I answered your question. What I did from a cook standpoint is to give our tests a little bit more flavor so that they can interact more better with us. Okay, Shankar, this question is related to the one which I asked earlier. Now, target field is mandatory, so we cannot identify a text which can be present on any part of the screen, right? We cannot identify, now target field is mandatory, so we cannot identify text which can be present on any part of the screen, right? So Shankar, just look at this command verify text present for a second. I couldn't get your question exactly, but let me try and see if this answers whatever you had in your mind. Verify text present is the command. Target holds where should I, what should I verify for? It doesn't tell me where I'm verifying. Verify text is a command which is saying where is it that I'm verifying and what is it that I'm verifying with. Correct? Now the difference between my verify text present is that it is searching for that text to be somewhere on the page. My verify text is searching for this works for any element that contains text. Gets text of that specific element, not anything on the web page. 
okay anything on the web page use present anything on that element use verified text hope that answers let me know if it doesn't okay well how to select another window open within tab so some of these very very interesting topics where how can i uh, identify what if i run the test case one time and i see disorder but the second time i run the test case is a little dynamic and it behaves a little erratically and it gives me a few more different things but my test didn't fail the canada which is appearing here is now moved somewhere else so the location of elements are changing what happens during that case how if a pop up comes up how do you handle it some of these areas i will definitely get to but at a later point i want to master the basic fundamental foundation then we will get there well all right no next one how to select any window where window name is dynamic after the same thing we will come to this at a later point i would love to keep answers to these but i will want to more focus on uh, relevance to what we are learning today or so far is there a special command to identify text on any part of the screen shankar so that i have answered let me know if it is okay select window title name equal doesn't work yeah so well you just got to uh, make sure that the information is going in correct uh, you could send me an email offline i'll try and get back to you offline okay team uh, i'm to the end of the session i didn't want this to be a very heavy session but i wanted to make sure that i give you the basics i give you the kick start for you to start to practice very simple all you have to do is get your firefox browser and install selenium ide okay doesn't matter which version for now i know that the uh, try and stick with 5 because rc uh, ideally works better with the 3 or 4 series but there were usually some challenges but they're still experimental they will still work at the moment all you have to do is just get selenium id google it when through go through uh, firefox you will find that uh, instructions the two three steps in the youtube channel please team i'm assuming there are no the questions on what we did so far generic questions on the training and other things you can contact me offline my website had a few challenges yesterday but uh, the webmasters they worked on it and they fixed it uh, so now it's um, safe to go back on that uh, for, for any further information feel free to call me or uh, write an email to me if you have any questions team thank you for attending and we'll see you back tomorrow then take care everyone bye for now